It's the magic of math here, and today we're talking scientific notation that we use to represent really large numbers or really small numbers. Here are our objectives for the lesson today. You, the student, will be able to write numbers using scientific notation. You will also be able to determine how many times greater one quantity is than the other by using scientific notation. The question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson, how can you determine if a number is written in scientific notation represents a very large or a very small quantity? So that's what you're thinking about. So let's review some vocabulary, making sure that we understand the parts of a power. A base. The base is the number that is raised to an exponent in a power. So right here in this power, the two is the base. Reviewing exponent, exponent is the number written above and to the right of the base in a power, and it indicates the number of times a base is multiplied by itself. So here, two is our base, four is our exponent. So four represents multiplying two by itself four times. So two times two, times two times two. And last but not least, we have power. A power is a value with a base and an exponent that is the product of the base multiplied by itself the number of times specified by the exponent. So this entire value is a power. This power has a base of two and an exponent of four. And when we multiply two by itself four times, it has a value of eight. So two to the fourth is a power that is equivalent to eight. All right, more vocabulary. Let's talk about standard form. When a number is written in standard form, it's written using base 10 notation. So this is 25 million, it's base 10 notation. So you've learned ones digit, tens, hundreds, thousands, 10 thousands, 100,000, million, 10 million. We consider this standard form written in base 10 notation. We can also write a number in scientific notation. Scientific notation is a product of two factors where the first factor is a number with an absolute value greater than or equal to one and less than 10. And the second factor is a power of 10. So when we take 25 million from standard form and write it in standard no in scientific notation, it looks like this. It has a factor greater than or equal to one and less than 10, and it's multiplied by a power of 10. We'll understand this more in a little bit. All right, what is scientific notation? Scientific notation, we've learned, is the product of two factors. We have our first factor here, 2.5, which has to have an absolute value greater than or equal to one and less than 10. We say absolute value because scientific notation could represent a negative value. But if this was negative 2.5, we wanna consider the absolute value of it to determine if this factor is greater than or equal to one and less than 10. Basically what it means is you have one significant digit to the left of the decimal. So this can't be zero. It has to be a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. If this were 10, it'd be a number, but it wouldn't be in scientific notation. Same thing, if this two was a zero, it would still represent a number, but it wouldn't be in scientific notation. And the base of the power must always be 10. You can have a positive or a negative exponent, but the exponent in the power 10 must be an integer. All right, so that second power of 10 has to have an integer. Factor multiplied by power of 10 is scientific notation. All right, we have 25 million here. Now we're gonna learn step-by-step step how to write this in scientific notation. Step one, we're gonna identify the location of the decimal point. So currently, this 25 million has a decimal point right here at the end. It's just invisible. It's not necessary to note it. Step two, 
We're going to move the decimal point until there is one digit to the left of the decimal point with an absolute value greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So we're going to take this decimal point and we're going to slide it all the way down and put it between the 2 and the 5. So now I have one significant digit to the left of that decimal point. So 2 is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So now that we've done that, step 3, oh, we've also moved it 7 decimal places. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then step 3, we want to write the first factor as a number whose absolute value is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So this is going to be 2.5. So there's no significant digit beyond the 5. They're all zeros. So when it ends in all zeros, we just need that last value. So we're going to say 2.5 is our factor. And then step 4 is to write the second factor as a power with a base of 10. So we're going to write a 10. And where we get the exponent from is how many decimal places we've moved our decimal point. Because this is a really large number, this is going to be a positive value. So if the number is greater than 1, this will be positive. If the number is less than 1, this exponent will be negative. So 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the 7th is scientific notation for 25 million. These are equivalent numbers. Standard form, scientific notation. Now it's your turn. I want you to identify what is 1,047,000 written in scientific notation. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So our solution is we're going to go step by step. The first thing is we're going to put our decimal point into its spot right here at the end and we're going to move it so we have one significant digit to the left. So we move this one, two, three, four, five, six. So we moved it six decimal places. So now we need this zero when we write our factor because it's in between significant digits. We don't need these trailing zeros. So our factor is going to be 1.047. So that's our factor multiplied by our power of 10. So we need our base of 10. Our exponent is going to be positive 6 because this number in standard form is greater than 1. So write in our exponent and there we go. 1,047,000 is equivalent to 1.047 multiplied by 10 to the 6th. This is scientific notation. All right, now let's do standard form. We have a very small number. So now the first thing we want to do is the same thing we've done before. Identify the location of the decimal point. It's visible. It's right here. Step 2 is the same. We're going to move the decimal point so it's one significant digit to the left. So we're going to move that decimal point all the way down in between the 1 and the 3. These zeros we do not need. We'll note them with the power of 10. So now we want to count. We're moving it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places. So let's write now where first factor is going to be 1.3, one significant digit. Then we're going to do step 4, which is to multiply by a power of 10. So our power of 10 is going to have an exponent of negative 8 because this value was less than 1. So we moved the decimal point 8 digits, but this value is less than 1. It's negative. It's not negative, sorry. It's less than 1, so our exponent is negative. Our negative exponent does not mean a negative value for the number. It just means that we're moving the decimal point to the left. So think of a number line where all the negative values are to the left of zero. When you have a negative exponent and we're going to go from scientific notation to standard form, we're going to move this decimal point to the left if the value is negative. We move it to the right if the exponent is positive. All right, your turn again. What is 0.000456 written in scientific notation. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going to go step by step. Identify the decimal point. 
We're going to move it so that there's one significant digit to the left of the decimal. So that's going to go right here. We're going to write this value as our factor. And we've moved the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4.56 is our factor. We're going to multiply by our power of 10. And our exponent is going to be negative 4 because this value is less than 1. So we're representing a number less than 1 gives us a negative exponent. All right, let's review how many times greater. What number multiplied by the expression 2 times 10 to the 4th is equivalent to the expression 2 times 10 to the 7th? So let's compare these values. We're wanting to know what number multiplied by this value will give us this value. So we have 2 times 10 to the 4th, and we have 2 times 10 to the 7th. When I consider the factors, they're the same. So when I go from this value to this value, the factors were multiplied by 1. I know that because any number multiplied by 1 is itself. So that must have been what happened here. So we just really now need to focus on these powers of 10. So what happened is, here I have 4 tens, here I have 7 tens. So what happened is I increased by 3 tens. So 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 3rd, same base, we add the exponents. 4 plus 3 is 7. So I know that 2 times 10 to the 4th multiplied by 10 cubed will be equivalent to 2 times 10 to the 7th. 10 cubed means I'm going to have three zeros here, 1,000. So I can say that 2 times 10 to the 7th is 1,000 times greater than 2 times 10 to the 4th. If I multiply 2 times 10 to the 4th by 1,000, I will get 2 times 10 to the 7th. Now it's your turn. What number multiplied by the expression 6 times 10 to the 5th is equivalent to the expression 6 times 10 to the 7th? Here's where you pause, determine which of these answers is correct, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's review our solution. So again, we want to know what number when multiplied by 6 times 10 to the 5th will result a product of 6 times 10 to the 7th. So we're going to compare 6 times 10 to the 5th and 6 times 10 to the 7th. Here, they have the same factor. So I know when I multiply, I'm multiplying here by 1 to get itself. So let's focus on the power. We have 10 to the 5th and ending with 10 to the 7th. So I've increased by 2 tens. So I know that 10 to the 5th multiplied by 10 squared same base, I'm going to add the exponents. 5 plus 2 is 7. So therefore, 6 times 10 to the 5th multiplied by 10 squared is equivalent to 6 times 10 to the 7th. 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100, giving us an answer of b. If I multiply 6 times 10 to the 5th by 100, I will get 6 times 10 to the 7th. So 6 times 10 to the 7th is 100 times greater than 6 times 10 to the 5th. Now it's your turn. The value of a home in California is 2.2 times 10 to the 10th dollars. The value of a home in Massachusetts is 2.2 times 10 to the 5th. The value of a home in California is how many times greater than the value of a home in Massachusetts? And you have four answer choices. Go ahead and pause the video here, do your best work, and then come back to see mine. Welcome back. So here's our solution. We're going to find out how many times greater this home in California is than the home in Massachusetts. So we're going to compare 2 times 2 times 10 to the 10th to 2.2 times 10 to the 5th. So once again, all of these are in scientific notation. So I'm going to write my multiplier in scientific notation. So what multiplied, what number when multiplied by 2.2 will give me 2.2? It has to be 1. Anything multiplied by 1 is itself. Now let's look at our powers. 
we've gone from 10 to the 10th, we've started at 10 to the 5th, and gotten to 10 to the 10th. So I have five more tens. So base of 10, exponent of five. 10 to the fifth times 10 to the fifth. You keep the base and add the exponents. Five plus five is 10. So I know that this quantity is one times 10 to the fifth times greater than this quantity. And that gives me an answer of D. There you have it. That is scientific notation representing a large number, much greater than one, and a number small, much less than one. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and come back soon.